hello, welcome to another Ken Simmons show. And for Area 58 Community Access Media, I happen to be Ken Simmons. Awful good to be with you. Always good to be with you. You know I love you. Uh, I've got a guest. I always say this. I've got an exciting guest. But this time, I mean it. I really got an exciting guest. I always mean it. My guests are exciting. But this guy's got some stories to tell that's going to knock your socks off. He's a great, great guy. We'll talk a little bit about him a little later. But how about this Trump thing? I don't know. I, I'm not pro-Trump. I'm not anti-Trump. I'm just a little sick of hearing about Trump and the NFL. Trump and North Korea. Listen, I was in North Korea in 51. I'm not going back. I already sent a letter to Trump. Hey, don't count on me this time. It's getting so when I play whist, I bid no Trump all the time. Listen, I want to tell you a quick story before I introduce you to my guest. And it's about uh, the time when I was uh, in the Korean thing. I joined the Air Force in April of 1951. And uh, we went to tech school and, you know, a lot of things that basic training and bivouacs and all that. And then I got assigned to a base out in Utah, Ogden, Utah. And for some reason or other, the uh, officer's club officer, the guy in charge, took a liking to me. Had me promoted to sergeant from PFC. I don't know how he did that. So that I could be the NCOIC at the officer's club. The officer's club is a beautiful place out there. It's, uh, let me explain that to you briefly. It's like a motel where officers can come and stay. They also have a beautiful restaurant and a bar and a package store. The package store was open from four to five, one hour. You could buy tax-free liquor. You know, what vodka and gin and whiskey and all that. And uh, it was signed by order of the commanding officer general, Gilkerson. He was a brigadier general, so one-star general. And uh, so that's what we did. We opened at four and we closed at five. And I was in charge of that. Uh, in the officer's club, there is no rank. If a colonel walks in and you're a sergeant, you, you could say, hi, Bill. That's the way it is in the officer's club. That's the way they want it to be, and that's the way it was. All right, with that in mind, we closed the package store at 5. Everybody went home. I was getting ready. In the officer's club, we worked 24 hours a day, around the clock and had 48 off. It was a good deal. Good for me. You could sleep. You could sleep there. The only thing is, if somebody came in and needed you, you had to get up out of bed. That's okay. So this captain came in with the braid I recognize as the general's aide. And he came in with a list and he said, are you in charge of the package store, Sergeant? I said, I am. He said, well, General Gilkerson wants a quarter of this and a pint of that and a pint of that. I said, the package store is closed. Oh, he said, this is General Gilkerson. I said, the package store is closed. He said, you don't understand. I said, I understand. What part of being closed don't you understand? And he said, I'm going to call the general. I said, there's the phone. He did. He called the general. The general. I heard him say, let me talk to him. So he said, I'm giving a party tonight, and I need this booze. I said, general. The package store is closed by your order. The only way we can open it is by another order from you. He said, well, I'm giving you the order now. I said, I don't know who I'm talking to. Who are you? I have no idea. All right. And somehow we got an order cut, and it came over. And uh, he came over with it personally, the general, dressed in a sports shirt and pants, civilian clothes. And he says, here's your damn order. Now open the package store. So I read the order. He said, you find anything wrong with it, Sergeant? I said, uh, no, sir. Uh, the, the only thing is, uh, this order is no good. He said, why not? I said, it's not signed. Give me the... And I said, okay, can I see some ID? I still don't know who you are. 
he went crazy. He went ballistic. <laughs> and he got in his wallet. And you know, all he had was his driver's license. I said, sir, I will accept that. I expected a military ID, but you apparently don't have it. So we opened the package, we gave him what he wanted. P.S., a few weeks later, I got a letter of commendation for sticking to my guns in the face of the Brigadier General. How about that, folks? True story, I swear to you. Gonna meet my friend and my guest. So don't you go away, you pour yourself your favorite beverage, slip off your shoes, and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. And I can't wait to introduce you to my guests. You're gonna be, don't leave, make plans right now, sit right where you are, because you're gonna enjoy this. Uh, not that you don't enjoy every one of my guests, and for every one of my guests, I thank you out there for being here, and I thank you, the viewers, for being there. Because if it wasn't for you, there'd be no need for me. I want to do something I always forget, and that's thank the people here at Area 58. Now, when I do a show, I do it here. I leave. They're still here. They're here six days a week, except for September and October. They're only five days a week, which is enough. And they're very busy, 12, 14, 16 hours. And here they take time out to do the show for me. They treat me like a king, like I was some kind of a star, which I'm certainly not. But thank you, Rich Goulart. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Will. He's not here. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, everybody at Area 58. Now I want you to meet a friend, uh, maybe a colleague, uh, and a hell of a nice guy, Jim Collins. Glad to meet you. How you doing? Good, Jim. How are you? Good, thank you. Good, good. Good to have you on the show. Thank you so much. I know that you're still suffering from your loss. Oh, yes, yes, of course. And you will always, I'm sorry to tell you. Yes. I lost my wife 10 years ago. I know. And uh, I cry every morning. Oh, I'm I sure you do. I cry every night. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Jim has had a very varied career varied life. We're going to do this in two segments. The first segment we're going to talk about, as you can see, he's an artist. He's not only an artist, well, I'm going to let him tell you. What, what am I sitting here letting him suck up all the energy <laughs> while I'm exhausted? Jim, you are an artist. I try to be. <laughs> That's very modest, but uh, from this painting I've seen, and I've seen other paintings of yours at uh, the uh, Old Home Day. Yes, you, that's right. Used to be over there. That's right. With John, and you'd be sitting there explaining these, and we talked then. Yes. So I want to explain to you. I always tell you that the people I interview, I don't know, and I don't want to know them until we're on camera because I enjoy the spontaneity. But I happen to know this man, and I know the kind of work he does. I didn't know the kind of man he is. And all three get straight A's from me. This is puppies. Now, let me ask you this. How long have you been painting? Um, well, only since I've moved here to Carver, about 15 years. Really? Yes, yes. You, you've become this accomplished in 15 years? Oh, yes, yes. Well, I always wanted to paint. And in high school, I really wanted to paint. But the people in my art class were so good, I did didn't want to paint in front too, of them. Too shy, <laughs> too shy to paint you in front. You got it. <laughs> well, did you do on the sly as a kid? Did you do some painting? No, because uh, as a kid, I was so busy with my my career that was about, about to come up. Yeah, good. Don't school. say anything about no, that. I, right. I just, you know, every day I was just busy with that and uh, never had time for this. Okay. And now that I'm retired from the business, I have lots of time to paint. Did you take lessons? Oh, yes. I started here in Plymouth. Yeah. Yeah, about who, 15 years ago. Who did you take lessons from? I can't remember her name now, but she was a wonderful teacher I and a wonderful so. artist. And, but she lives in Florida now, so it's been a, a, quite a while since I've seen her or, or heard from her, you know. 
with the 15 years experience you've had in painting, could anybody be a painter? Oh, most, most everybody could paint. Really? Oh, yes. I have people. I mean, as good as this? Or that, as well as I've this? I've got students that are better than me, believe me. Oh, they're wonderful. Really? Oh, I just envy them. I do. I really do. Yes. You envy them? I do. Yes. Oh, they, I have one lady, and she does portraits, and she does animal portraits. And she puts soul in the animal's eyes, that, like the animal's looking right at you and loving you. What a beautiful way to put it. Oh, she's just wonderful. When you look into an animal's eyes, you see soul. That's right. I, 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 I want to get into that. that. That's the subject for another show. <laughs> uh, Fifteen, you, do you do oil? O water? Oil. No, acrylic? I don't do water. I do acrylic and oil. Yeah. And charcoal. And charcoal. Yes. Which one of those mediums do you like the best? Every one. <laughs> I couldn't choose. I love because it's nice to keep changing so that you don't get bored doing the same thing. How know? often do you paint? Well, I teach two classes a week. Okay. So it's just Where the two do weeks. you teach? I teach at the senior center here in, in Carver. At uh, COA. COA? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yes. Do you charge for your service? No, it's free. It's all free. You teach painting free? Yes. How about that, folks? Uh, do you have a website? No, I don't. Do you have a whole phone number that you care to give I, I, out? I sure. Sure do. You want it now? Yeah. It's 508-866-4480. Jim Collins. Say it one more time. 506 508 866-4480. Okay, that's the phone number. This is Jim Collins. I didn't know that he did teaching free. Uh, this segment has gone by so fast, I can't believe it. So we're going to take a break right now, and we're going to talk a little bit more about his painting, and we're going to talk about the career this man had. So don't go away. Love you. Stay there. Be right back. Okay, we're back, and I was just talking with my friend Jim Collins here, and he has some stories to tell, and maybe we can talk him into telling one or two of the stories as you're viewing it. Uh, Jim, good to see you. Nice to see you. I, uh, I wanted those, we have some paintings there. Yes. If you could just turn one of those paintings sure. towards the camera over here and just explain it just a little bit. You know, that almost looks like a Monet. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very really? much. Well, actually, this I did quite a few years ago, and it's the first character that I ever painted. Beautiful. It's, it's usually beautiful. sceneries that, that I, uh, I do, beautiful. you know. And, uh, it's a sensuous lady, and you can't see her or any body parts, but the way you did it, it's very sensuous. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. But a uh, little, little thing that I do, uh, because I'm not so good at faces and eyes. Oh, okay. I always do their backs. <laughs> <laughs> You're great at backs. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Let me you. take this over thank here. Thank you. And the next oh, you one? want another one? Yep. All right. This one... Um, was just used on a, on a, a recipe book. Uh, one of my students was putting a recipe book together. And uh, she said, do you have any pictures of, you know, cooking goods? I said, well, I have a painting. She said, let's look at it. She said, yes. Yeah. So it, it's on the cover of, the, of her cooking book. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I see a sign, Tony Collins. Well, Tony Collins was my stage name. Oh, OK. And we'll I, get into that in a minute. OK. I'll tell you why it's Tony. OK. And this, uh, again, was something that I had never done before. It's the first ink and charcoal painting. I think that's beautiful. That that's, I've done. Thank you. It's so Thank nostalgic. You. It's so well, you see, it's a little different, too, because you see how I've, I've used the mat to paint on besides? Oh, yes. And yes. a lot of my paintings that I do like that. You did. So, you painted right on the mat. Oh, yes, yes. And so they sell right away because they're so different. Yeah. Very, very, very nice. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Are these for sale? They're all for sale. Okay. Yes. I have about 60 of them at home. Really? Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that's beautiful. Well, that's thank you. Beautiful. And this I love because 
I am very enchanted with dogs. I know. And I got a kick out of the way that, if you can see the sign up here, it's supposed to say puppies for sale. It says puppies for sale. <laughs> At the time, he was probably taking a little grass or something. <laughs> Who knows? I think, bring that over here, Tony. Okay. It's I don't know whether to call you Tony now or Jim. Whatever you'd like. Okay. Hey, you, is it even okay? <laughs> uh, Jim and I have something in common. Uh, I was born and brought up in Randolph, not too far from here. Were you born in Randolph? No, I was born in Dorchester. Dorchester. Yes. Lived in Randolph at what age? Uh, I, we moved to Randolph when I was seven, and I lived there for 53 years. 53 years? Yes. Oh, you're yeah. a Randolphian then? More or less, yes. 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 I've lived there for, I don't know, about 70 years, I guess, before we moved down here to the really? peaceful little village of Carver. Okay. Uh, we had a mutual friend there. Uh, he was a little younger than me. His name was Parker Richards. And at the time, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers were very, very popular. And he looked like a young, he's 10 or 12 years old now, Fred Astaire. He, I wish I had a picture of him because he had a top hat on and tails and he sang the song and did the dance. Top hat and tail. That's right. That's and right. he was terrific. Yes. But guess what? His mother forced him to do it. We had a, a dance school there by the name of, uh, do you remember her name? Phyllis Williams. Phyllis Williams. Yes. And he took dancing lessons from her. Hated every minute of it, but did it because his mother wanted him to. <laughs> she was one of those stage mothers, I think, who thought he could get into the movies. But he would have none of it. As soon as he was old enough to get out of the house, he threw the top hat and tails out, <laughs> and he became a regular guy. He was very funny. Yes. Very funny yes. guy. Yep. And uh, he passed away at a very early age, no. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, he, he was only about 50 years old oh, when, when he passed away. And we were good friends. I caught him uptown in Randolph with a ball and chain on. You remember the old ball and oh, chain, or the yeah. chain gang? Yeah. Used to chain the yes. guy with a big heavy ball so he couldn't run away. Yeah, that's right. And his Parker pulling the chain. Oh, oh, oh. And I said, what happened? And he said, I got married. Oh, yeah. I said, okay. And my wife thinks this is funny. When I was drunk and in a drunken stupor, sleeping, she put this on me, uh, uh, uh. and I can't get it off, so I'm heading down to the blacksmith. We had a blacksmith that ran up on Grove Street really? to I see if he could chop this off of it. Imagine me. that. But let's get back to you. You were also a dancer. Yes. You know, took lessons from Phyllis Williams? Yes, I did. Did you really? Yes, yes. Okay, I didn't know that. Yes. She yeah. was very popular. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, she was connected to uh, Virginia Williams, who was the artistic director of the Boston Ballet. Oh, for God's sake. They were sake. cousins, yes. Now, is it true that you were in the Boston Ballet? 36 years. 36 years yes. in the Boston Ballet. I'm going to ask you a question now. Don't want to put you out on a limb. I know what they call a female ballerina. Yes. What do they call a male? Uh, well, if they're the lead male, they're the premier dancer. Okay. Yes. That's French. Yes. What's is. the Italian? I have no idea. Ballerino. No kidding. Yes. Is that right? Yes. I looked it up on my computer so I could startle you. There you go. <laughs> it's ballerino All right. and ballerina. Uh -huh. That's Italian. Yes. And French is danseuse and danseur. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, you dance in the Nutcracker. Yes. For how many years? Uh, well, yeah, actually for 36 years. And before the Nutcracker, uh, a Boston Ballet wasn't Boston Ballet. It okay. wasn't? No. There was no Boston Ballet until uh, the Ford Company gave them a $144,000 grant. And then we had money to buy new costumes and scenery and do all the stuff you should do. Okay? But before that, it was the New England Civic Ballet. And we worked on a shoestring. We had no money. And, uh, but we, she still produced wonderful dancers. And they, they danced all over the world, you know. Now for 36, I gotta interrupt you for a minute. For 36 years, on my computer, before I came here to talk with you, it says that training to be a ballerina or a ballerino is like training to be a football player. Oh, definitely. It's very, very hard work. Definitely. Very difficult. Yes. 
How does one stay at something like that for 36 years? Well, you've got to love it. You've got yeah, to love it. But you don't do it for the money. Um, in my case, I did it for the money. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Uh, my mother and father were divorced, and my mother needed the, the finances to help support her house. So I, I, stayed, I started as a chorus boy, all right? And I think I was making $320 a week, something like that. And then after 10 years, I became a soloist, which means you do little solos in whatever ballet is going on. And then I finally became a, 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 a premier dancer. You did? Okay. And that was, they paid the most money, of course. And then, because I was working on stilts. On I, stilts? Yes, because I really didn't do much dancing. I was a character dancer by then. And I was, I guess, probably 40 years old when they put me on stilts. And I said, I don't know. So the, the first, very first day, she said, go over there and try the stilts on. Go ahead. So I go, put them on, fell right in my face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that was always a problem. So they paid me hazard pay. <laughs> really? Yes. So I got $600, $600 a week more for the hazard pay. Oh, it's worth so, it. Yeah. So <coughs> it was very nice. I like that. And of course, because uh, I was with the company for so long, I got a lot of notoriety in the press and I television, guess. you know. And uh, some of the ballerinas didn't like that. <laughs> Do you have they, a scrapbook? Oh, f uh, several. Several. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. And. Uh, so the money I stayed in for, and I love the notoriety. That was wonderful, too. Yes. Did people recognize you on the street? Oh, or? as a matter of fact, I was walking down in Plymouth Center, oh, maybe two summers ago. And all of a sudden, I hear this little voice, Tony Collins, Tony Collins. And I said, where's that voice coming from? And it was a, a girl across the street. She was a teenager. And she was one of my little Paula Chanel's. Paula Chanel's being one of the little children that yes. came out from out of my skirt. Yes. And she was now a teenager. She wasn't 10 years old anymore. And she still recognized me. Isn't that something? Yeah. That's yeah. so gratifying. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, off camera, we talked about Blinstrips. Oh, yes. A few people are sitting there viewing. There, there will be some of you that recognize the name Blinstrips because it was very, very popular. I used to go there every week with my wife and whoever else could... Uh, afford to go there. Not that it was expensive, it wasn't in my opinion. You got a great dinner, you got great atmosphere, and you got a great show. Uh, and the, the, I thought that it was very, very reasonable. I, didn't, I don't know how he did it, but uh, it was a nightclub. It held, if my memory serves me right, it seated 2,200 people. That's right. That's a big, that's a big place for Boston. And uh, okay, I don't wanna, you worked there. Yes. What, what, what did you do there? Well, again, I went in there as a chorus boy. Yeah. And um, he liked my work. The, and the, the production company was from uh, California. And uh, he would put um, uh, shows together in Las Vegas. And then he would kinescope them and then send them to Boston. And we would take the show off the kinescope and put it into the Blinstrom show. The Blinstrom show. Oh, and um, I went in as a chorus boy. And he did like my work. And... Uh, a few times he, he let me choreograph thing, brand new things for the show here. And then uh, one time he was ill or something and I had to produce the show for him. Oh, wow. And uh, wow, I was very happy t to do that. Yeah. And like I say, it was two and a half years. And in the summertime, there was no show at Blindstrom's. He would have no show. So I was able to uh, live at home, of course. And uh, I would do um, summer stock, local summer stock, so that I could even commute back and forth to the summer Jeez, in the summer. Boy, boy, as a, as a, a ballerino? No, 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 I was I was doing all kinds of musicals. Oh. Yes, my my most favorite one was when I had to dance with G Ginger Rogers. You danced with Ginger oh, Rogers? Oh, yes, yes, yes. She and Fred Astaire, you know, didn't get along that well. Oh, I heard that, I I heard that. She, she made the comments once, somebody said Fred Astaire's a great dancer. And she said, hey, wait a minute. I do exactly what he does, only backwards and in heels. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I said to myself, I like that lady, Yeah. but he was a great dancer. You oh, can't take that away from wonderful, him. Wonderful, wonderful, but yeah. very demanding. He yes, was I the heard boss. That. I and heard he that. told her what she wore and what color she had to wear. Yeah. And, yeah. and she didn't like that. Did, yeah. Could you dance like him? 
Could you? Oh, well, I didn't have to do that. We were doing Annie Get Your Gun, so it wasn't oh. that kind of dancing. Oh, okay. Okay? Okay. And she was wonderful in Annie Get Your Gun. Where were you doing the Annie uh, Get Your that Gun? That was in uh, uh, Wallingford, Connecticut, and... Uh, Summerstock. Summerstock, yeah. Okay. It was two, two different theaters, theaters we worked back and forth all summer. A week in Wallingford and a week in the other one, I can't remember, but anyway. One in New yeah. Haven? I think it might have been. There was a place... No, that's a place they used to test Broadway shows, oh, okay. pre, pre-Broadway. Oh, like they had here in Boston. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. But I enjoyed the summer stock because it was so close to home. I saw, I was in New Haven on business, and I went into that theater, I forget the name of it now, and I saw Ray Milland and somebody else, a, a minor character, doing a show that I can't remember the name. It was a mystery. Oh. It was pre-Broadway, and... He went along with the lines, and all of a sudden he said, all right, stop, stop, stop. And he leaned over to the audience. That last line, do you think that belonged? <laughs> and the audience gave him their opinion. Oh, he said, I agree with you. Let's scratch that damn line. That's funny. That was great. Yes, that was yes. Great. Right. How long were you in Blenstrom's? Uh, two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yep. Enjoy it? Oh, very much. Really? Very much. As a matter of fact, my mother was married the second time, and her wedding reception was there. Oh, for God's so, sake. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, so I went to Mr. B, and I said, my mother's having a reception here, and I, I want to put the bill. <sighs> he gave us a, a wedding reception like you wouldn't believe. I think it was a dollar and a half a head he charged me, okay? <laughs> oh, I'm, wow. It's like 25 or $35 now oh, a head, you know? That's incredible. Oh, he was He wonderful. was a great guy. And then the star of the show invited my mother and her new husband into his dressing room for champagne. Who was the star of the show? Uh, Guy Mitchell. Guy Mitchell. Yes, yes. Wonderful man. I loved him. And a great singer. Yeah. Quick story about Bunchers. I took my mother, my mother loved Wayne Newton. Oh, yes, sure. So I called up Stanley. As I said, we were kind of friends. Uh, that's another show, too. But uh, I told my mother wanted to see. And he said, I give it my table. Uh, my table. So here's the table. It's seated ten. Oh yes. But my mother sat right here. Here's the stage right here. Oh. She's got her chin on the stage. <laughs> and he came on singing, "Red roses for a blue lady." Yes. And he came over to my mother. Stanley had tipped him off. He came over to my mother, got down on his knee, and sang the song to her. Oh. And she's like this. Oh. And she said, well, while he's singing, she says. You smell just like a baby. <laughs> That's a true story, I swear to God. Is that funny? <laughs> Stanley, Stanley Blitz is a great guy. Oh, yes. yes. We've only got a, a, about a minute left. We've got about two minutes left. Uh, anything you'd like to say to the people before we leave? Well, I would like to say that if there are any of you who would... Oops, sorry, wrong camera. I would like to say that any of you, uh, any of you who would like to take art classes, please call me. And uh, I will, I'll start the art class very slowly so that you can, you know, take your time. And, uh, and it's very inexpensive to buy your, your, your uh, art supplies. Uh, it's like $30 to start, and that $30 will last you a whole year. And then if you like it, you go on from there and, you know. That's great. Give me the phone number one more time. Okay, it's 508-866. 4480, Jim Collins. And that's right here in Carver, the COA? You got it. And what days? I'm there on, uh, on Tuesday afternoon and uh, Wednesday evening. Okay. Get that phone number written down. You can call them. We're running out of time. Thank you so much, Jim Collins, for being here. Thank you for You gave me. my show a big lift. You uh -huh. gave me a big lift. You made my day. I hope he made your day. And remember this. You haven't got rid of me yet. I'm coming back. I'm going to have another guest. If I don't have another guest, I'll do a 30-minute ad lib. What do you think of that? In the meantime, I love you. Keep watching. And like Lawrence Welk used to say, keep a song. Thanks. Wonderful. Thanks.